We're speaking with the member for Frome and the Shadow Minister for Regional Health Services, Penny Pratt. How are you today, Penny? Good morning, Ricky, and to your listeners, I'm really well. Look, Penny, that's good to hear. Uh, good to hear you well, because we certainly have a focus on health in this current week. It's Are You OK Day uh, on Thursday, but also it's Women's Health Week. Uh, there's It's National Child Protection Week. A great deal of important causes to focus on looking after people's health. Indeed, and uh, I pay close attention to those details, Ricky, and I'll, I'll throw a few more uh, at you just to round it out, of course. On Saturday, the 10th of September, we also mark World Suicide Prevention Day. World First Aid Day and as you mentioned Child Protection we we roll into Foster and Kinship Carer Week Uh, in in recognising these days and weeks, uh, these anniversaries it's an opportunity to reflect on um, uh, frontline um, workers and volunteers in uh, in the form of foster carers, um, but but also people who may be um, struggling with depression or anxiety um, for for all sorts of reasons, whether it's it's temporary or or uh, perhaps more long term. And uh, it's always important to talk about what support services um, are available for people in our community. Yeah, it's an important conversation. We'll provide the um, important numbers to contact if you're someone in distress uh, later on in the interview. But uh, it is good to see that in our community, people are at least more willing to talk about their mental health struggles than maybe even 10 or 15 years ago. Yes, I think that's right. And um, it it is um, quite a a frequent flyer as a topic for me um, when I'm, um, as I move around my electorate of foam through the Mid-North and and, um, Goida Light regions. Um, Even though it's a heavy topic, I am pleased that men in particular, um, but, but people of all ages, feel comfortable at least to share with me their worries um, and it allows me to talk with them about what services might they need or or have access to and and of course what services might be missing so that there's an opportunity for me to pursue that uh, either through the House and Parliament um, with the current government or or with local um, health practitioners. Now, we've been through a challenging few years with restrictions related to COVID-19 and that's, uh, I guess, isolated some people socially from others. Uh, do we have an adequate level or did we have an adequate level of mental health services during that or coming out of COVID-19 restrictions? Look, I think that's a great question and uh, it is hard to quantify sometimes what all the resources are. I imagine um, when, when you're having a bit of a um, black dog day, it's, it's really hard to, um, um, to diagnose yourself and, um, and, and work out where those resources are. But I think we're seeing more and more resources being available to, to regional people. And I think that the pandemic um, has taught us or given us access to more uh, telehealth, virtual and online um, services. So we can speak to a therapist over the phone, we can FaceTime with a GP for a referral, we can go online, text and call Lifeline for example and I think for our rural and remote communities access is the most important thing. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, services are important. I noticed the uh, ch- rural charity Rural Aid has been raising funds to put uh, mental health counsellors in regional parts of South Australia as well and that's a, a an important element is that non-government sector, but also it's just individual South Australians in terms of being ready to have a conversation with others with Are You OK Day tomorrow, um, Thursday the 8th of September. Uh, it's just equipping people like at areyouok.org.au um, how to have that conversation. Oh, exactly. And I'll be making a speech about Are You OK Day in Parliament today and um, and focusing on World Suicide Prevention uh, Week. But um, yesterday, Lifeline Australia gave a briefing to parliamentarians and, and I paid close attention to some of the, the very heavy uh, statistics that um, they share. And I think it is important to understand the impact of COVID. So pre-pandemic um, days, they were seeing about 2,500 calls um, uh, and uh, we've seen a, a, an increase of a thousand contacts, up to three and a half thousand um, on average uh, now daily um, post pandemic. So many more people are seeking uh, a trained volunteer at Lifeline to to speak to. They also have a text service, which I think is important to note. The number is oh four double seven one three. 
triple one four. And Ricky, I mentioned that because I think not everyone will will be comfortable in speaking, but they but there would be um, a group of people who might prefer just to send a text and have a conversation that way. Yeah, Penny, it's a good point you make. I'll get you to give that number again because I have heard yeah. from Lifeline that they have said this has actually been more popular than the um, the telephone service because people have you know even saved the number in their contacts and quickly reached out by text. What is that number again? Exactly. Look, I'm I'm happy to spend some time on it. So to call Lifeline, remember these numbers, 13, 11, 14. And the text line, Ricky, is um, the beginning of that, 0477 13 11 14, to text 0477 13 11 14. And they have seen an increase in about 400 um, individual contacts by text. And I think... Uh, my, in my experience, um, younger people prefer to text. Uh, it can be a less threatening or confronting way to start that conversation. So I certainly would encourage people in our community to to take up that opportunity. But my um, my my pet um, uh, topic, if you like, around mental health services in our region is the Lifeline Connect Centre in Clare. It's the only centre in South Australia currently. It's a bricks and mortar walk-in centre. And um, I mention it because it is a free, no referral service for nearly immediate access to a social worker. So I'd encourage people who might just be having a frustrating day um, with uh, with filling out forms, or they're looking for a job and they and the internet's uh, just difficult to navigate. Um, it's it's an opportunity to to walk in, have a conversation with a trained volunteer, no appointment needed. A social worker not far off, um, you know, in, in the next 24 hours. So uh, I really would commend that as a service in Clare, 1 Blanche Street, Clare. Yeah, that's a really important service and good to know that is available. And uh, certainly that um, suicide prevention topic as we re- approach the weekend it is really important as well. Uh, we need to do everything we can to support people in that context as well. Penny Pratt, uh, Shadow Minister for Regional Health Services, thank you very much for joining us today on a really important topic as we head towards Are You OK Day. Thank you very much for giving it such a profile, Ricky.